Now we're at design for instruction. What number is this component? Four. Four. How many are there? Seven. This is our midpoint. This is where we plan lessons. So how many of you think you would start with lesson planning? I did. My first year of teaching, I'm like, what do I want to teach them all? Teach them this, and then I start with lesson planning. How many times do you think I created a lesson plan that wasn't right for my kids? An awful lot. I tell you, that first year of teaching is a huge learning experience. I'd like to give you a leg up. So we're at the midpoint, and this is where we start planning lessons. Okay. Which means when we're done with component four, we're past the midpoint. That's when we start teaching stuff. Right? So we've done more than half of our work before we start teaching. Now, with the bus metaphor, what's this component? Finding the route. That's how you get there. This is how you map out how you're going to get there, right? And this is ridiculously important because this has everything to do with your starting point. If I tell you how to get to Disney from Orlando, that's not going to do you any good if you're in Haines City, right? So your starting point matters. That's why this has to reflect the context. And you have to use your pre-assessment results to inform instruction. So this is, there's three things you have to think about when you do this component. Your written component, your lesson plans, and your learning activities. The written component is relatively simple. Pre-assessment did this. This is how it informed my instruction. Bullet list of the stuff you're going to do, link it to the learning goals, written component, done. Right? That's it. This is where all the work happens. Lesson plans. I want to point out to you that lesson plans are a legal document. Some of the stuff that you have to put in lesson plans, you are going to think is silly to put on paper for the rest of your career. It is a legal document. So even if you've mentioned some of this stuff in another part of the work sample, that doesn't do anything for your school. You have to include your goals and objectives, the standards that those objectives address, materials, activities, assessment, and accommodations. Those things have to be there universally. Your district might have other requirements too. I'll never understand the lesson plan format that my wife's school uses, but that's their prerogative to require that format. So whatever format you have to use, Find that out before you get started so you know what has to go in there. Okay. Now, your learning activities. There are items on the rubric for this as, as well. Your learning activities need to be appropriate for your learners. Makes sense, right? Promote active learning, high order thinking, a variety of methods, accommodate specific learning needs. These are the things you have to do. Um, I like that last bullet because I mentioned teaching fractions to sixth graders, right? How many times do you think I wanted to go back and throttle their fifth grade teachers? <laughs> Represent your content accurately. Now, to be fair to elementary school teachers, even if you teach it correctly, doesn't mean they're going to learn it correctly. But please, set your students up for success and set your middle school teachers up for joy by teaching them correctly. Your lesson objectives. Now, remember that difference between learning goals and lesson objectives. This is where you break down your learning goals. In the example of a teacher work sample, I highlight one of the, lesson, one of the learning goals and explain how that contains six lesson objectives. Right? So take a look at that example. You can see how that works. But you're going to break down your learning goals to create your lesson objectives. Remember the ABCDs, your audience, the behavior, conditions, and the degree. How many of you learned about the ABCDs in your coursework? Sweet. For those of you that didn't, pay close attention because it's ridiculously useful. Let me give you that same objective as an example. Audience. Who's going to do it? The student. The student will do it. The behavior I'm looking for is there in red. 
explain the concept of pi? Under what conditions? Well, given an image of a circle or a circular object with the diameter and the circumference labeled. Because, you know, that, that makes sense. Degree, accurately, and in their own words. That's that mastery bit. That's how I know they've done it. Okay? So the ABCD, that's your lesson objectives. You're not going to include all that detail in your learning goals, but when you get to your lesson plans, you want that there. Rubric, I talked about all this stuff. Um, let me go back to indicator one, actually. All lesson plans for the unit are attached. So they're not in your teacher work sample document, but they're attached when you submit it in live text. Now, I've got detailed instructions in this slideshow that show you how to do that. It's like 25 slides. I'm not gonna show it to you. Incorporate available technology in a way that supports student understanding is your exemplary indicator. Learning activities are designed to enhance the cultural relevance. So this is where that culture background piece comes into play, right? There's an exemplary indicator for that. There, this is the slide I thought was coming next. All right, so notice this is step 19 and 20 of a whole big process. Go on the website, download this when it comes time to turn in your teacher work sample. But I wanna point out to you, there's a template that has three sections. You're gonna upload your work sample and your graph maker in the first one, your pre and post assessment in the second one, no matter how many files that is, and your lesson plans in the last one, no matter how many files that is. Don't dump it all into your teacher work sample document or it'll be like 100 pages. That's no good.